guys, Learning with Rich here. In this video, before we create our spaces in our Revit Fire Alarm system, so let me just go quickly uh, teach you and let us explore some settings that we can use to set up our electrical project, like our fire alarm system uh, design. So I'm going to show you the electrical settings. So we use the electrical settings to specify, let's say, for example, the wiring parameters, voltage definitions, and distribution systems. If you are into cable trade, there is also cable trade settings and conduit settings that you can find there. And then there are also load calculation and circuit numbering settings. Okay, so this is one of the few things that we also need to consider whenever we set up our project for electrical, like on our uh fire alarm system device okay so to activate or to open the electrical settings dialog box you can type es or you can also go to your systems tab and then from there on the electrical panel you can see here the dialog launcher okay so as you can see the shortcut is es so you can click this and then you will now see here the electrical settings dialog box Okay, so the first thing that you will see here is we have the hidden line. So we use the hidden line options here at the right side. So if you click the hidden line, so these are the options here. So we use the hidden line uh, pane of the electrical settings dialog. If you want to specify how hidden lines are drawn in our electrical systems. Okay, so that's how it works. So as you can see here, so you have the draw MEP hidden lines. So you can check that one by default. And then for the line style, so you have the MEP hidden. So if you click the drop down arrow here, you can see other options that you can use whenever you create your line style for electrical. Okay, but we are going to use these default settings here as well as the inside gap and then the outside gap as well as the single line uh, value for your hidden line. Okay, so another option that we can go here is the general uh, option here so you use the general pane of our electrical settings dialog to define the basic parameters and set default values for electrical systems like for example the separator and then the electrical data style so this will gonna be how it looks like okay and then there's the circuit description so this is gonna be how it looks like so as you can see uh, the volts and then the pace there and then the ampere so this will gonna be how it look like in your project so if you click the drop down arrow here you can see some options that you can use and then hips of circuit naming by pace a b c like that and then capitalization for load names circuit sequence numerical and then the circuit rating amperes and then you also have the circuit path option which is nine feet uh, by default so aside from that you also have the angles okay so we use this uh, option to specify the fitting and angle to use when adding or modifying cable tray or conduit okay so you can modify this one so you can set an increment you can use specific angles for this one okay or you can just check use any angle so aside from that we also have wiring okay so we use this option to specify here the settings for our wiring okay so you can see here the ambient temperature so this has something to do with the designing as well so if you are into designing you're an electrical engineering you should be able to understand these options that we can see on our electrical settings so ambient temperature you can set that one up gap of wiring crossing so you can also change that value and then for the tick mark you can specify their long wire tick mark by default but as you can see if you have other types of tick marks you can put it here so you can click the drop down arrow and then you can select the different types of tick mark that you want to appear if your wire is hot wire ground wire or neutral wire Okay, so there is also an option here to slanted line across tick marks. But in my case, I do not show the tick marks. So instead of showing it always, so I just select here never. 
Okay, so I don't show the tick marks. And you can also specify here the maximum voltage drop for branch circuits wire sizing and then the for feeder circuit wire sizing. And then you have you also have the arrow for multi circuits home run and then home run arrow style. Okay, so aside from that, we also have here a voltage definition. So this is also important. Okay, you can define different ranges of voltages that can be assigned to our distribution system available in our project. So we need to set this up first, and then we need to specify that when we do our distribution system, okay, that are available in your project. Of course, if you want, just like your voltage definition, if you want, you can also add here your distribution system, and then you can specify what uh, how many paces, configuration, wires, LL voltage, and then LG voltage. Okay, so aside from that, you also have the uh, cable tray settings there. So the cable uh, cable tray settings here, you can see some options when using annotation scale for line fittings. So you can check that one. So you can specify in this option whether a cable tray fittings are drawn at the size specified by the cable tray fitting annotation size uh, parameter, which is uh, this one. So changing this setting does not change the plotted size of components already placed in the project. So don't worry about that. And another option here or another setting is the cable tray fitting annotation size. So it specifies the plotted size of fittings drawn in single line views. So this size is maintained regardless of the drawing scale. Okay, so aside from that, you can also specify here the cable tray, uh, cable tray size separator, which specifies the symbol to be used in showing our cable tray sizes. So for example, like this one, we have an X value. When an X is used, a cable tray that is 12 inches high and 4 inches deep would be shown as 12 inches and then X, the separator, and then 4 inches. Okay, so 12 inches, X, 4 inches. So that is your separator, it's X. And then you can also specify here the cable tray size suffix. So if you want to specify the symbol appended to the cable tray size. So you also have here the cable tray connector separator, which specifies the symbol used to separate information between two connectors. Okay, and then you also have here the rise drop setting for your cable tray, wherein you can specify here the cable tray rise drop annotation size. So there's the size. And then you can also change here the uh, symbol, like for example, for the rise symbol of your cable tray, by default, it's crossed, no outline. So if you want to have a look how it looks like, you can click the drop down or the ellipsis button there. And then you can see here that this is how it looks like when your cable tray, where the when your single line cable tray rise. And then you also have here an option to change the drop symbol. So this is for the uh, right symbol and then this is for the drop symbol again you can click the ellipsis button here if you want to change the symbol and then you can also see here how it looks like okay and then you can also change here the settings of your two line symbology by if it is rising symbol so there's the cross if it is drop symbol so there's the cross by default again it uh, depends on your company settings, so it's your preference. So I'm just showing you where to find it. So aside from that, you can also specify here the sizes that you want to use for your cable tray. So if you are into ducting, you can just imagine that this is also your ducting wherein you specify the sizes and then you just need to check what are the sizes that you want to use whenever you create your cable tray, when it, whatever or whenever you create your cable tray, what are the sizes that you want to be available? So by default, all of these are checked. And then of course, you can also create your own one. So aside from that, you also have the conduit settings, okay? So if you click the conduit settings, again, it's just like your cable tray. So these are the settings that you can use. 
to specify your cable tray. So it also has the rise drop option as well as the single line symbology and then two line symbology and then the size here. And then of course, we also have here the calculations. So if you are into designing, you are the electrical engineer, so you can use the load calculation here to check out how it is being computed as well as the panel schedules. Okay, so another thing that I want to uh, share with you is that when you go to your uh, visibility graphic override, if you click the edit here, okay, there's an option here that is object style. Of course, you can modify this, the model categories, but you can also go to object styles here. So this will, uh, how it looks like when you create your cable tray. The line weight here by default is 3. The cable tray fittings is 3. The line color here is black. And then the pattern here is solid. So you can change the settings, how it looks like whenever you create your fire alarm system elements as well as your cable tray, your conduit, okay, your conduit fittings. So you can change the object styles. Okay, so another thing that <clears throat> I would like to share with you guys is if you go to the manage tab, okay, so there is uh, additional settings here. If you click the drop down arrow, so there is an option here wherein you can specify the line style. You can even specify here the line weight. If you click the line weight, so on the line weight dialog box, so as you can see, there's the model line weights. And you will notice the value of our uh, scale here if you are in 1 inches to 1 foot. So this will going to be the scale. Okay. And then so on and so forth. All right. So these are just some of the things that we can use to specify the settings of our fire alarm system, which is actually also an electrical uh, system. Okay, but this one is specific. So what we are trying to do is fire alarm system device. But, okay, so make sure you drop by on your electrical settings to modify the settings how it looks like. Okay, all right. So... For our next video, we are going to talk about spaces. Okay, so thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.